Political violence in Burundi has forced hundreds of thousands of people to flee their homes since the 2015 presidential election. Many have sought safety in refugee camps set up in neighboring countries. This is Nduta camp, one of three camps in Tanzania where Burundians are living. I'm Eline Nyonsaba. I'm 21. I came here from Bujumbara, Burundi. My life was affected by the political violence in Burundi. Because for one thing, I used the streets to get to my job and the streets were blocked. If you get caught on the streets, they can decide that you are a demonstrator. And when you don't report to work three times in one week, you get fired. You end up being jobless and unable to buy food. Even if you manage to get some money, you can't shop because all the stores are closed. The people who would cross the streets were suicidal. They would just say, let's go, we're already dead. You have to choose between life and death. When I first arrived at the camp, I didn't feel good. I was facing a strange new life. I was in the forest and I didn't recognize anyone. It's difficult to live here because I don't have a job. Even if I could get some money, I can't get a permit to go into town. My tent leaks when we're sleeping and it rains. We wake up and have to sit. I didn't manage to bring anything with me when I left Burundi, except for the clothes I was wearing and two bed sheets to cover myself at night. I left a lot of things behind, a house, a cupboard. I was renting the house, but it seems like it's still mine. And the major thing that I left behind, and it shocked me, is my baby boy. I had been living with the father of my son, but his family disapproved of our relationship. They told him that he couldn't live with a Tutsi because he is a Hutu. They wanted him to marry a Hutu girl. It was an ethnic issue and it was difficult to bear. Unfortunately, we got separated before the fighting began in our city and he had our son. I had gone to the police station in the camp one day to charge my phone and I met some women who were there. There was a 17-year-old girl named Ange, looking very down. She was ill and I asked her what was wrong with her. The women all said they had left Burundi without getting registered, so they were waiting to be taken back to town for registration. Ange was seriously ill from malaria and I felt sorry for them because they would have to spend the night in the mass shelters here at the camp. I told them that when they come back from registration, they could come and find me at my tent. When they came back, they called me and I went to pick them up. We've all been living together for two weeks now. Miss Ange? Yes. How did you get to this camp? It wasn't easy. I went through a lot of places first. We went north, we went south, we walked. Sometimes we got a lift. It's a long story. Ange told me that she'd lived with her father and her little sister, who's three. And one day, her father was killed. And after her father was killed, the killers started chasing her, so they could kill her too. So she ran to her uncle. They saved some household items, then they left and Ange came here, to this refugee camp. 
She has a lot going on in her head. She thinks about life here. She thinks about everything her family used to have and about how her father was killed. Most of the time, I find her crying her eyes out, and I'm also affected. How did you feel after meeting me for the first time? You did something precious for us. You took care of us. You gave us everything we needed. I was also very happy to meet you. I would not let you go to the mass shelters. Do you know how I met Frazia? No. How did you meet this child? At dusk one day, when I was coming from the camp's police station, you know how I like to walk. I saw my friends and neighbors. It was over there at that house, the plot over there. They told me, Aline, since you are a friend, we have this child called Frazia. She is an orphan with no parents. She fled alone from Burundi. I said, mm, she fled alone. So where does she stay? They said she lives with us. But since we have many other children, we would like for you to take her. So help us and take her to live with you. I have a merciful heart. And also, after my parents died, I was raised by others. So I agreed. I said, I'm an orphan and she's an orphan. Let me take her and raise her. We will share whatever food I have.